Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's part 37 of my fitness database series, whether or not you're building a database to track your fitness, this is a video on building databases. So you're going to learn some cool tips and tricks. And if you haven't watched parts 1 through 36, go watch those first so you know what we're doing. Today we're going to figure out what the most recent entry was on a specific date. So if we add an item to a previous date, it adds it at the end instead of at the beginning. So let's get to it. Alrighty, and we're back. Let's pick up where we left off yesterday. And when we add items to a previous day, right now they're just coming in at midnight up top. Let's figure out what the last item on that day is and add it after that. And if it's midnight, that's fine. But I want it to be at the bottom, not the top, right? That doesn't make sense. All right, so let's go into our proper log date time function, which we could follow. We'll follow the noodles. Follow the noodles. Uh, add food item to the log. If you can never remember the name of a function, just, just drill down to it. There it is right there. It, I happen to be here, but I would have found it with this and then came up to here. All right, so um, if we're on the same date, that's fine, right? Entry for today. We'll leave that alone. Otherwise, entry for a different day. And in here, instead of just setting it equal to the log date, let's figure out what the the max the max date time of an item on that day is. Okay, so we'll need uh, a date time value. We'll call it the FDT food date time, whatever you want to call it, as a date. And now we're going to say FDT equals, we're going to use the DMAX function because we want the largest of something, right? We want the largest date time on that date. So we have to shoehorn it in between whatever value is in the log date up top. Okay. Uh, and, if, and if one doesn't exist, then we'll just return that value at midnight. So we'll use NZ in case it's null. DMAX. And if you're not familiar with DMAX and you got this far in the series, go watch my DMAX video. <laughs> You'll find it on my website. Do a search for it. Um, by, by this point in the series, I don't hold your hand anymore unless it's something totally new. Like we're going to be doing a union query soon, and I haven't done that in this series yet. But I'm pretty sure we've did DMAX. All right. So what are we looking up? Well, we're looking up a food date time from the food log table. It's another item in the log where... The food date time is greater than or equal to the log date. Now the log date could have a time in it, so we're gonna we're gonna take the date value of it. So inside of pound signs, it's gonna be the date value of let's make this another line. All right, actually let's close. We don't need you. Turn you off for now. The date value of the log date and close the pound. Now we'll make it another line. I hate doing that where you break it inside of those things. I like to get all that on the same line. Okay, so it's got to be greater than or equal to that value there and the food date time has to be less than that plus one, right? So it's date value, log date, plus one, and my thingy. Now, just in case, there are no entries on that date. We're going to give it date value log date. So it'll give it midnight on that date. And something's typed wrong. What did I miss? Probably a parenthesis somewhere. Let's see here. Yeah, I found it. It's a quote. Anybody see it? Pause the video. Try to find it yourself if you can. I know this thing can get crazy. I always start from the beginning and look. Okay, NZ, there's that open parenthesis. I wish Access had that built in where it, if you highlighted one of these, it would show you the closing one. Hint, it's not a parenthesis. All right, there's that closing one. Here's the DMAX, and here's its closing one. Okay, then we got food date time, food log date. Oh, right there. Pink. See? That'd be nice for the access editor if it had that. Like, you could select this, and it would show you the closing one. All right, so anyways, so now we've got the food date time of the largest item on that date. So we'll say find largest or... Uh, max date time on specified date, whatever. I've never been great at writing comments. 
Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add one second to that date. So we make sure it's after the last one, right? So the value we're returning is going to be where are we at here? Oh, the proper log date equals, get rid of this. We're going to say date add a second. How many seconds? One second to what value? FDT, All right? Food date time. So it'll be one second after the, the last item on that date. And if it isn't, it'll be midnight plus one second. Now, as I was writing this, I was thinking to myself the possibility, you know, it's possible with this algorithm, if, you, if, you, if you're adding it at 11.59, 59.59 p.m., it's possible to push it a date too far. So we got to check for that too. But it's, it, this, is, this should almost never come up. We're just going to say if the date that we have now is greater than the log date, just back it up a second. So if the date value that we end up with of proper log date time is greater than the date value of the log date, that's the guy up top, then went too far, bring it back one second. So we'll just say proper log date time equals the date value of the log date. And here's a cool thing you can do. You can say plus, I'm gonna add to the log date time, 11.59.59 p.m. And if, because because we're already that, that basically says we're 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 at midnight on the on the next day. We we added a second too far. You got to bring it back. So might those last few items, if that's the case, be slightly out of order? Yeah. If you're adding stuff at 11:59:59, and okay, but again, that's an edge case. That should almost never happen. Let's test it. <laughs> Save it. Debug compile. I laughed a few times when I was writing this code because I'm like, this should never happen. But you know what? The one thing I've learned in 30 years of consulting and building databases and stuff is that you're going to run into these edge cases. Even when you think it might never happen, it's going to happen. Someone's going to do it. And so you got to think of this weird stuff. All right. Did we debug compile? Yes, we did. All right. Let's go try it. Here we go. Let's add something to today. All right, that's, that's today's date and time, that's good. I tried these new Atlas bars, they're okay. They're kind of chalky. They're not, they're not bad, they're not as bad as some things like the Quest, but Quest bars are awful. All right, now here we are in this date. If I add it, it should go into 40001. Let's try it, add an apple. Boom, there it is. Add another one. See how it's going on the end though, that's the important part. Okay, and if you look in the log, those should be, yep, same. 401, it's adding a second to each one. So they stay in order. You could look at the food log ID, but this, this, this works. This works. We're not doing Mars probes here. And this is going to come up again when we get to the adding the meal items too, because you want them to stay in order. So we're going to add a second to them. All right. Um, another usability thing that I ran into when I was working with this, hit the plus button without something in the combo box. Eh. Invalid use of null. We could fix that easily. Right, if the combo box is null, get out of town, right in here. All right, if is null, food combo, then exit sub. If you wanna give them an error message, go right ahead. I don't care for me personally, because this, this is my personal database and I know if I didn't put anything in there, it's just not gonna do anything now. But I, don't, I like to avoid those errors. Especially if you're dealing with a database you're gonna distribute to other people because if you're giving them a compiled version, that error will basically crash the whole database. <laughs> All right, next up, I like when you're in here and we type in something like uh, AP, it, it drops the box down while you're typing. But then once you pick one, I want the box to not stay open there, right? Once I pick it, close the box. And unfortunately, there is no combo box dot close method. There's only a drop down method. So we'll see how we deal with this in tomorrow's class. So that's going to do it for your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part 38. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. 
It's a directory I put together personally of access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.